Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. If you like what we do and want to tip us, you can now do so directly to our PayPal. Check out the link in the description to this episode for more details. And as always, you can subscribe to our Patreon, where we share stories of life in Ukraine in times of war. Our latest episode is the story of a local resident who saw the start of the war in Donbass. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 242 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu made a series of phone calls to his foreign colleagues, in which he accused Ukraine of preparing to use so-called dirty bomb, a conventional explosive laced with radioactive material, reports Ukrainska Pravda. It is known about the calls to the ministers of the US, UK, Turkey and France. According to Shoigu, Ukraine may use such a bomb on its own territory to blame Russia. This accusation was quickly spread by the Russian state media. Ukraine Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov said in response that, quote, every day the Ukrainian army liberates our land from Russian dirt, the thought of a dirty bomb is repulsive to us, unquote. He invites UN and International Atomic Energy Agency monitoring missions to Ukraine. The minister also demands compliance with Article 4 of the Budapest Memorandum signed by the US, UK and Russia. This article states that the signatories confirm their commitment to seek immediate action from the UN Security Council to provide assistance to Ukraine as a non-nuclear weapon state in the event that Ukraine becomes the victim of an act of aggression or the object of the threat of aggression with the use of nuclear weapons. The Budapest Memorandum of 1994 gave Ukraine security guarantees for joining the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. As of 1991, Ukraine had the world's third largest nuclear arsenal, but gave it up voluntarily in 1996. Minister of Foreign Affairs Dmitry Kuleba had a phone call with the U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken, reports LBUA. According to Kuleba, both sides agreed that dispersing the wave of disinformation about the dirty bomb, Russia may be looking for an excuse for a false flag operation. The minister stressed that Ukraine doesn't have any dirty bombs, no plan to acquire them. He added that discussed with Blinken how to strengthen Ukraine's air defense. According to the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, Shoigu likely sought to slow or suspend Western military aid to Ukraine and possibly weaken the NATO alliance with his accusations, reports Hromatske. Russia needs that as it faces continued military setbacks and the likely loss of Western Kherson by the end of the year. The experts believe that the Kremlin is unlikely to be preparing an imminent false flag dirty bomb attack. They think Shigu's claims to be part of a long-standing Russian information campaign in which Moscow has repeatedly claimed that Western states will help Ukraine conduct provocations. Also accused the Russian armed forces of using chemical, biological or tactical nuclear weapons. Shigu's claims likely do not represent Russia's preparations to use non-strategic nuclear weapons in Ukraine either, say experts of the institute. In his evening video address, President Volodymyr Zelensky said there is only one subject who can use nuclear weapons in our part of Europe, and it is Putin. According to Zelensky, if Russia calls and says that Ukraine is allegedly preparing something, it means only one thing – Russia has already prepared all this. I believe that now the world should react in the toughest possible way. If Russia has prepared another round of raising stakes and another escalating step, it must see now, preemptively and before it's any new dirt, that the world will not swallow that." Unquote. The president believes that even the very Russian threat of nuclear weapons is a reason for both sanctions and even greater strengthening of support for Ukraine, who gave up its nuclear arsenal. Volodymyr Zelensky informed that in all Ukrainian regions which became the target of Saturday's Russian attack, the technical possibility of electricity supply had been restored. At the same time, the president added that blackouts still take place because there are not enough generation capabilities at the moment. Restoring energy facilities destroyed by the attacks is a much longer and more difficult task, said Zelensky. He again reminded about the need to consume electricity very consciously. The president asked local authorities to make sure that energy is not wasted as now is not the time for bright shop windows and signs. The general staff of Ukraine informs that Russian forces focus their efforts on offensive operations in the Bakhmut and Avdiivka directions, reports Unian. 
According to available information, Russia continues the training of a part of the mobilized personnel at the military training grounds. The Russian Su-30 fighter jet crashed in the Russian city of Irkutsk, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the local governor Igor Kobzev, the plane crashed into a two-story building. As a result, two pilots were killed, no casualties among the civilian population reported. Earlier, a Russian Su-34 fighter jet crashed into a high-rise building during takeoff in Yeysk, Russia. 15 people were reported dead. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.